Hey guys, welcome back, and we're going to do some uh, some gaming news. A little bit of gaming journalism here, right? This is a uh, first. Actually, I think I've covered video games on this, this channel once before. But we are only a few weeks away. Hell, are we even less than a few weeks away? I think it's like 15 days. Okay, so like two weeks from Starfield finally releasing. I've got it pre-installed. I gotta say 140 gigabytes on my hard drive is... Pretty crazy for a game that I'm not even that excited about, but hey, it's on Game Pass, so technically it's kind of like it's free. I don't know, so I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out. I'm gonna play it when it launches. Um, but so early reviews are in. There's people saying that they've played for 15 hours, no bugs. There are apparently um, quite a few positive reviews coming in, strong reviews, uh, 4.9 out of 5 stars on 14 reviews according to some of these websites. So everything is seeming better than it should be. Now, if we remember, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Cyberpunk was kind of the same way. Cyberpunk was one of those games that had a lot of like strong early reviews. And then it kind of came out that, you know, people weren't exactly honest about it. People were encouraged to give more than a more than positive uh, kind of polished, glamorized review of what was really happening versus the, the harsh reality that there was a lot of major problems with the game. So, I mean, there's now things where people are concerned about the fact that uh, there's been some data mining leaks that have shown that NVIDIA and Intel graphics cards are not going to be able to be upscaled. Uh, apparently, it's going to be only you know compatible with AMD, which for me, even though I'm using AMD, I really don't care because my computer's four years old and it's not exactly like top of the line. So I'm not going to be doing much uh, overclocking or any of the high, high resolution graphics. I'm, I'm going to be... I'm going to be using my shadows on medium. I'm going to be doing graphics on medium, so I really don't care. It's whatever. But of course, now what we have today is criticism of the Starfield start screen. Now, this seems like such a minor thing, but this has just blown up all over Twitter or X, as I guess it's now called, where apparently somebody, uh, the Twitter account Grums, which is a, a longtime uh, video game developer named Mark Kern, I do believe, criticized Starfield's uh, kind of basic, boring start screen that got, you know, released. And it's caused a bit of a stink. So here's the original tweet. Grums had said, The physiognomy of start screens. The start screen of a game can reveal a lot about how rushed that the team was and how much pride they took in their work. Starfield's start screen either shows hasty shipping deadlines by a passionate team overworked or a team that didn't care. Which, I mean, to be fair, if he has years and years of developing... Uh, experience when it comes to actual game development, I, I can understand that he might have a certain opinion on it. Now, this has turned into quite the thing where everybody is just attacking him, saying he's just trying to farm Twitter reactions, which maybe he is. Maybe he's just trying to get Twitter impressions to get that payout from Elon, you know, who knows. But, you know, he, uh, he might have a point, but then at the same time, there are plenty of other examples of Bethesda games having very simple start screens. So who knows? Who even knows what the actual reason behind it is? All I know is he shared an opinion and then people started like rushing out. For example, this one here, uh, this guy tweeted at this guy, DC Deacon. He said, hey, DC Deacon, next time you and the lovely folks over at Bethesda Games, instead of rushing to make a game with many systems, factions, choices, and ways to play, I would urge you to only focus on the title screen. So you guys won't appear to be hasty or simply don't care. Pete Hines over there, DC Deacon said, or they designed what they wanted and that's been our menu for years and was one of the things we settled on. Having an opinion is one thing. Questioning uh, questioning out a developer's care because you would have done it different is highly unprofessional coming from another quote dev. Now, first off, no need to throw shade at another guy who's an actual game developer. Like You might not like his political takes or his uh, opinion on your game, but uh, you know, Kern had been... Worked, he has worked on World of Warcraft, Starcraft, Diablo 2. He's got quite a, a itinerary of, uh, or yeah, sorry, excuse me, a resume of games that he's worked on. So whether you like his opinion or not, he's a legitimate game developer. So then if you go over to like Paul Tassi on Twitter, he had a real big brain take. He tweeted out the screenshot from Grums with another explanation of physiognomy and said, when you look up a word some 100,000 follower idiot tried to use to sound smart and is most commonly linked with Nazi race science. The fact that Paul Tassi had to look up physiognomy is just embarrassing because then he put this long uh, this screenshot in here about basically saying how it's all a bunch of uh, debunked theories which were once used to legitimize slavery and perpetuate, uh, you know, the bad guys from WW2 race science. Like, give me a break, dude. That's not the only uh, explanation for what he's saying. 
But this is where he instantly goes to, is, is the bad guys from WW2, right? So Grums is getting buried. He's, he's still replying as of a few minutes ago here. Um, people who are just dogpiling him. He's like, look, do you have any idea how many times we rushed a game of Blizzard to meet a sales deadline? Rushed does not mean bad quality. That's on you. Why should I apologize for people who can't read? I never said anything about gameplay. You know, so he's just got people in his mentions going at him left and right. But it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a day ending in Y if we didn't have an idiotic take from Hassan, which I have to share because this is just this is just gold right here. Okay, guys. I know I just mentioned Hassan on my last video, but 20 second clip here. Just humor me, okay? Uh, yeah, we're good to go. This and game Todd is a reflection of the incredible okay. and passionate team that made it. Damn, dude. Y'all fucking, y'all ride that dick. You guys are, you guys are riding the dick of white men, okay? White men that have lied to you in the past. They've lied to you and they've led you astray and they've hurt your feelings and you're still riding it. Moments. So that's his reaction to this entire thing is you're riding the dick of white men as if as if white men are the reason that the games have been bad. Look, I am sure Bethesda, like every other AAA studio, has plenty of diversity initiatives where they have a wide variety of people from different ethnic and, uh, you know, sexual orientation backgrounds and all sorts of diversity. So I don't think that the issue that we have with Bethesda and the quality of their games or the quality of their start screen or anything to do with any bugs in any game that you're going to encounter has to do with white men. And people, of course, roasting Hassan, pointing out that he himself is white. <laughs> uh, and all while he himself is white. It's Hassan of fucking course it is. Who else would it be? I mean, PS fanboy take. People are just destroying him in the comments and it's hilarious. But yeah, guys, I don't know. I'm I'm curious to see how Starfield plays. Like I said, it's not a game that I was like dying, like waiting for. I, I saw some trailers for it. I thought it looked interesting. I'll give it a go. If it sucks, it's another game I'll uninstall. But damn, 140 gigabytes I had to clear up on my hard drive. That, that was a lot. That was a lot. All right, let me know if you guys are going to be playing this down below in the comments. Appreciate you as always. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one.